$400,000 worth of cocaine, meth, and heroin was seized. Police say 856 has been looking to expand its operations in BC and Canada. They really initiated as a group of young punks thugs, street level kids. Our detectives uh, were a bit surprised to see the level of sophistication, the variety of drugs, and to go so far as to have uh, what is essentially a fully functional reprocessing and repackaging facility. In today's video, we're talking about the 856 gang from British Columbia, Canada. It started as a bunch of kids just messing around and became one of the strongest gangs in the Yellowknife region. As of right now, the gang is still active in multiple provinces. We're going to get into how it was formed, what kind of criminal activities it was responsible for, and some key events in the gang's history. Let's get into it. The gang, locally known as the BC Boys, was started by a bunch of high school students at Aldergrove Secondary School in Aldergrove, British Columbia, back in 2003. 856, the gang's name, came from Aldergrove's telephone prefix. Another name for them is EFS, which stands for 856. Originally, the police called them a bunch of punk teenagers, but they grew into a violent force. Charlie Fox, a Langley Town Councillor and the former principal of Aldergrove Community Secondary School, knew most of the founding members well. He said that these students had a history of working through elementary and secondary school. He also stated that he wouldn't call them troubled, but they didn't have any parental guidance or direction growing up. And when it came to making decisions, they didn't have the support that most kids did. But with time, the group became more violent. In just four years time, the group of boys went from petty crimes such as theft and vandalism to serious crimes like drug trafficking and attempted murders. In September 2007, they rose to prominence after a high-speed chase through rural Langley that ended with the shooting of Leonard, an alleged Hells Angels associate. Six people were arrested after this incident and were identified as the core members of the gang by the RCMP. Five years later, in 2012, a research paper stated that the 856 had a total of 60 members and found that 13 of those could be called core members. As it turned out, any early arrest did not affect the gang and its operations. Through the backing of Hells Angels, the infamous biker organization, the 856 started to expand into northern British Columbia, Yukon, and the northwestern territories over the next few years. These two gangs had their ups and downs, but as long as 856 stayed off of Angel's territory, they were allowed to run their operations in peace. Back in 2010, RCMP seized about $90,000 worth of marijuana and cocaine from a truck outside Yellowknife, and the man testified that he had ties to Hell's Angels. Hell's Angels supplied the gang with drugs and allowed them to operate in the northern regions, away from Major Angel's turf, which gave them the space to expand on their own. By 2011, the 856 gang was sending up three people to Yellowknife every week to move and sell their own product, and through their own people. This way, there was a very reduced chance of skimming and stealing, and it allowed them to become major players in the game. In March 2013, Joshua, a 22-year-old from Langley, was arrested for waving a loaded semi-automatic handgun outside the Raven Pub in downtown Yellowknife. The RCMP found him to be related to the 856, and he was sentenced to three years in prison. Later that year, in December, 11 people were arrested in the first major 856 drug bust. This was called Operation Goblin, and it happened at five different locations in Yellowknife. These raids found more than 8 ounces of marijuana and almost 3 ounces of cocaine, and nearly $32,000 in cash along with two crossbows, a rifle, and a handgun. Charlie Fox, the former principal, couldn't believe the news when he heard about the bust. He said it surprised the heck out of him and that they'd expanded to serious crimes, and he believed that some other, older people were encouraging these youngsters to act out. In January 2014, 26-year-old Rusty Landry was sentenced to 15 months in jail after he was arrested the previous summer for drug trafficking. Court documents found that he was known to sell crack for the 856 gang. Six months later, 51-year-old Stan, who was arrested as part of Operation Goblin, was sentenced to nine months in prison for trafficking cocaine. According to authorities, he wasn't a full member of the gang, but he sold drugs on their behalf. A month later, Matthew Yeager, 30 years old at the time, was handed a 15-month jail sentence after he pleaded guilty to having around $21,000 in cash that he got from selling cocaine. He had an 8 tattooed on the inside of his lip, the first step to getting the full 856 tattoo that most core members had. Matthew was not handed any trafficking charges, but he was known as the guy who'd handled the gang's finances in the city of Yellowknife. In August 2014, a woman and four men were arrested after a heavily armed RCMP raid on a trailer in Northland Trailer Park. 
the police said that the raids were related to the drug trafficking activities of the 856 gang. Following this raid, 23-year-old Tanner Short was sentenced to 18 months in prison after he pleaded guilty to drug trafficking. The same month, 24-year-old Nathan Hodges, who had alleged ties to the gang, stabbed a 22-year-old over 20 times after a massive fight outside of Coyote Steakhouse. Six months later, drug trafficking charges were laid against alleged senior members of the gang, Leonard and Jason, after a 2014 raid in Langley. That raid found $400,000 worth of meth, heroin, cocaine, oxycodone, and a 20-ton press used to make cocaine bricks. The police also discovered 44 kilograms of a chemical normally used to deworm pigs, which 856 used to dilute their coke. A month later, seven people were arrested during two raids and a traffic stop after the police were following the gang's activity in Yellowknife. RCMP seized 126 grams of cocaine, 28 MDMA pills, and a high amount of anabolic steroids. Charges ranging from weapon possession to drug trafficking were laid against the arrested men. Despite multiple busts and various arrests, the gang was thriving. On March 16, 2015, three men walked out of a townhouse in a quiet White House neighborhood. All of them had the sides of their heads shaved, with a flat strip of hair in the middle. They got into a car and drove off. But the members of the Yukon's Federal Investigations Unit were watching, as they had been watching and investigating them for over a year. As part of this investigation, one undercover cop had even frequently bought from one of them named Jeffrey Reddick. He was a dial doper He ran drugs across town, exchanging tiny bags of coke for cash, ranging from $50 for less than a gram up to $12,000 for 4 ounces. He had bragged to the undercover cop that he and his associates were the elite. He was in a highly risky business and the police suspected he was a part of a bigger ring that had recently come and set up in Whitehorse, Reddick's hometown. And it turned out that the larger organization was the 856 gang. That night, as the men drove away, the police tailed him closely and cut him off. He tried to run from the takedown but couldn't get away from the police car barrier. He was arrested along with his two passengers. One was a 33 year old who was couch surfing at the townhouse. The other was Taylor Wallace, Jason Wallace's younger brother, who was suspected to be the leader of the local 856 cell and Reddick's boss. After the arrest, the police went back and busted the townhouse. There, they found loaded handguns and rifles, enough rocks of cocaine for 90 individual sales, as well as ecstasy, $20,000 worth of cash, ammunition, and black t-shirts with 856 written on them in white lettering. Another man was arrested the same night, and eight more were caught in the next few weeks, most of them coming from the Langley area. Police found an 8 on Reddick's lip, another suspect had 8-5 in the same spot, and Taylor Wallace had the full 856. According to authorities, an 8 meant a low level dealer, those with 8-5 were a level up, while 856 meant top level. A while later in 2016, Joshua was again caught with 126 grams of crack and two digital skills. After the police raided his house, they also found cash, marijuana, and ecstasy pills. He had only been out of jail for two months before he was arrested again. He denied his involvement with the 856 gang, but upon investigation, they found 8-5 tattooed on his lower lip, meaning he was on the gang's hierarchy. Joshua also had an 8 tattooed on one thumb and a 5 tattooed on the other, and he had a skull with the crown tattooed on his chest with 856 written inside the crown. He was sentenced to four and a half years in prison. Another key figure in the story was Bob Green. He was a prominent member of Hells Angels for over 20 years, and given his rank, there had been attempts on his life. He was also associated with the 856 since their formation in the mid-2000s, and his murder was quite possibly the single most prominent event in driving Hells Angels against 856 into an all-out gang war. Before we continue, I've got a quick word to share from our sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. Where the Ridge Wallet shines is making a thin, durable wallet with a lifetime warranty. Personally, I love how premium it looks and feels, due to them being made out of high quality materials like titanium. Also, they're extremely convenient since it's super slim and accessing cash and cards is a breeze. Ordering before September 30th enters you to win a brand new upgraded Ford Bronco. You can use the link in the description or code HUD Chronicles to receive 10% off of your order. Now let's get back into the video. The story starts on October 16th, 2016. On that day, Bob was shot to death by Jason Wallace at a Langley party outside a building used by the 856 as a clubhouse. As it turns out, the party had been going on for over a day, and everybody involved was heavily intoxicated on cocaine, nitrous oxide, and alcohol. 
An escort who was at the scene later told the police that Wallace pulled a gun on Green after the Hells Angels repeatedly kept saying, you cannot kill me. And he shot under the influence of drugs and alcohol, completely unaware of what he was doing. Hours after the shooting, Wallace found himself facing an impossible choice. He called his friend to talk, but somebody else took over the call. Reportedly, the man gave two choices. He could kill himself, or he could turn himself into the Hells Angels, and they would kill him. And if he didn't do either of those, his family would be executed. A day later, Wallace made a different choice. He turned himself into the police and told him his family was in danger. On his call to the police, Wallace broke down crying and said he was out of his mind on drugs and shit, and that he didn't even understand how it happened, but he had killed his friend. As he pled guilty to manslaughter with the use of a firearm, he was charged with second degree murder and was sentenced to 6 years in prison. As Green had been at Hells Angels for over 20 years, hundreds of bikers from as far as Ontario came to attend his funeral. According to the local radio, even several police officers were in attendance as they expected things to get really bad in the region. 10 days later, Sean Cleary, one of Jason Wallace's closest friends, was brutally murdered. His body was dismembered and his remains were found on a rural street in Langley. According to police, his death seemed like a clear message to the gang. A high profile Hells Angels member had a house up the road from where Cleary's body was dumped, and an 856 leader also had a property nearby. Police stated that what had been done to the body was barbaric. Although he didn't have any gang related tattoos, he was reportedly part of the 856 and had several prominent 856 members added on Facebook, including Leonard. At Wallace's sentence hearing, his lawyer told the court that his client felt terrible about what had happened to both Green and Cleary. He said that the victim of his act was one of his best friends, and the weapon that killed him, which was later found to be Cleary's, also belonged to another friend who had been killed. He claimed that Wallace felt immeasurable guilt and remorse. The 856 gang had reportedly been in chaos since the murder of Bob Green. Lindsay, staff sergeant of the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit, said that it was understandable given the significance of the murder and who was involved. He said that the ripple effects of a high-ranking gangster's death could destabilize any gang, and this put the gang at odds with the Hells Angels who were once in alliance with them. Despite the turbulence, Lindsay stated that the 856 still exist and have a presence in the drug trafficking ring. As of current, the gang is still active in parts of British Columbia and the Northwest Territories. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more like this in the future. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and have a good one.